so in this particular topic we will be discussing about the speed of a traveling wave now let's have a quick recap of what we know we know how to find the position of the wave plus we also know that is say suppose this is y and this is x comma t that is the position of the wave at a distance of x for a time t that is what we have completed so far in our chapter of wave so this was given by a let me name this which was amplitude this is my amplitude sin kx minus omega t plus phi so what is k i have defined what is k what is x what is omega and what is t and what is phi in my previous chapter but let's have a quick recap if you do not or if you have not seen the previous videos so for me k is the angular wave number k is the angular wave number angular wave number omega is actually equal to angular frequency of the wave angular frequency of wave x is a distance and t is your time and phi is the phase this is a constant phase at which the wave has started at time t equals to 0 at time t equals to 0 what was the initial phase of the wave so this is what is given by phi now i often find doubts regarding the omega why well, some say to me that this is a angular velocity as we have done in our laws of motion this is angular velocity now over here in wave we have angular frequency so but i want to tell you that both of these terms are interrelated both of these terms are interrelated because when a particular object is rotating in a circle about a fixed axis about a fixed axis this is your angular velocity angular velocity now how do we define angular velocity that is the total distance that is the total distance travel total distance travel or the total degree that is the total degree the total phase change the total phi that is the total phase or the total degrees or the total distance that has been traveled divided by time taken divided by time taken that is the angular velocity that is at what time will it cover a angle of say theta so this is the time required time required and this is the angle covered so this is known as the angular velocity now when we come to wave when we come to wave we define omega as angular frequency that is the total change in phase that is the total change in phase here was the total degree or the total distance covered now over here you have the total phase change that is this is the phase this is the phase say twice pi is the phase that is uh, in a sinusoidal wave you have twice pi as the complete phase twice pi as the complete phase now if twice pi is a complete phase and t is the time period there is a total phase change divided by the time taken this is your angular frequency of the wave now we can see that for both different cases we have used the same concept that is angular frequency and angular velocity now i expect the students that they don't have any confusion regarding omega okay so coming back we have defined what is omega omega is twice pi total phase upon the time period this is the time period time period to complete a 
this is a time period to complete the whole wave to its initial phase or the total time taken to travel from one crest to another crest that is the consecutive crest or consecutive troughs. So we have also defined T that is omega. Now K, we know K to be your K was your angular wave number. This is my angular wave number and K was defined as K was defined as twice pi by lambda that is for a complete phase of twice pi how many that is the wavelength of the wave that is for a complete phase divided by the wavelength this will give you the wave number that is angular wave number how many angular wave number will we get and this is given by total phase divided by the wavelength so these are some of the terms that we have defined now this is my position of the wave this is my position of the wave now in some books you will see that to find the velocity of the traveling wave we just differentiate this by dy by dt so they just differentiate this by dy by dt and hence we find the wave velocity but in your book you have been given a different method so let's concentrate on that particular method and i have worked also like to explain to you why you should not get confused regarding different methods in sorry regarding different methods so let's have a look at how we can by taking any of the methods used how we can find the velocity of the wave when we talk about velocity of the wave say suppose this is your wave now after some time this wave comes over here that is this waves comes over here so this is the distance that is let's say this distance be del x so this is the distance that has been traveled by the wave or the energy the energy to bring from this point to this point that is the transfer in energy transfer in energy so this is the transfer and this is the time required this is del t is the time required so initially the position was say x now the position is x plus del x initially the position for x the time was t if the wave is at the position x then the time that has gone by is t now if the position is del x so there will be a time del t that has been added so now the current time is del t now there is an interesting thing that is for a fixed phase now we have this wave is a sinusoidal wave so it is oscillating to and fro it is oscillating to and fro perpendicular to the direction of motion so this is oscillating to and fro now let's suppose we take the calculation for a fixed phase that is we have a fixed phase say suppose this is my phase this is my phase that is a fixed phase fixed phase now i will do the calculation in my fixed phase now in my fixed phase i have sine kx minus omega t this is my part i am taking phi to be 0 just for calculation sake let's say the wave has at time t equals to 0 the wave has started over here that is the phi that is the phase is 0 it is starting from here just for calculation sake so i have neglected phi so it was a sin omega a sin kx minus omega t now i am doing a calculation for a fixed phase that is y will be equal for a fixed phase but as we go as we go along x axis we have a change in the distance x plus also a change in time t as we know y equals to x comma t that is a change in x with respect to a change in t so but for a fixed phase that is for a fixed phase say suppose sine 180 degree or sine If this is 180, 
so we know this is equal to 0 or sin 0 degree that is for a fixed phase now these two phases are same these two phases are same now therefore the value the value should be equal that is every time kx minus omega t should be equal for a fixed phase that is fixed phase now over here 180 degree and 0 degree now let me make a difference in 180 degree and in 0 degree there is a difference in 0 degree the wave is going up in 180 degree after 180 degree the wave is going down so it is it is not in that is it is not in phase now the answer why it is not in phase is because as I've said this is going up and this is going down so there is a difference there is a difference now say suppose a wave is traveling after some time another wave is traveling so the frequency of the wave is same therefore the phase will also be same that is they have a fixed phase difference they will have a fixed phase difference so this is what I mean by fixed phase so for a fixed phase we know that this particular quantity should always be constant this should always be constant now for a change in k that that is a change in x there will be a change in t so let's have a look at the calculation we know kx minus omega t is equal to constant because it's a fixed phase therefore sine kx minus omega t should be constant should be constant now this will be constant when this particular sorry this will be constant when this particular value is constant now what you can do is that we have assumed this to be constant now let's see how the NCERT book has defined our wave velocity now we know for a change in del x there is a change in del t so let's put this kx minus omega t is equal to k x plus del x sorry this is minus minus omega t plus del t so this is what we have by putting the above value this is what we get so after that by solving if you solve this is kx minus omega t equals to kx plus k into del x minus omega t plus minus of omega into del t so minus omega t and minus omega t gets cancelled kx and kx gets cancelled so now you have k del x is equal to omega del t so if you place the omega over here so this is what you get this is kx and omega del t now del x upon del t is equal to omega upon k now for a very small change in x that is there will be a very small change in t so this is del x for a very small x we have dx upon dt is equal to omega upon k now what is this this is nothing this is nothing but your velocity velocity so proceeding further we have v velocity is equal to omega upon k so this is what we should get v is equal to omega upon k that is the angular frequency omega is the angular frequency and k is the angular wave number one is angular frequency of wave and this is angular wave number and this is how you define velocity now there is another way that is v equals so i am multiplying twice pi on both sides twice pi upon k so this is what we get this is what we get now again going further i have defined k to be k to be 
twice pi upon lambda. Therefore, lambda equals to twice pi upon k. Lambda equals to twice pi upon k. Therefore, 1 by lambda, 1 by lambda is equal to k upon twice pi. 1 by lambda equals to k upon twice pi. So, can we substitute from over here, can we substitute from over here 1 by lambda twice pi upon k, twice pi upon k. So, lambda equals to twice pi upon k, twice pi upon k. So, this can be substituted as lambda into omega by twice pi. Now, again, from the previous relations we had omega, let's put it in different color, omega equals to twice pi by t. Omega equals to twice pi by t. So, t is equal to twice pi by omega. Therefore, 1 by t is equal to omega upon twice pi. Omega upon twice pi. This is 1 by t. So, omega upon twice pi can be taken from over here. Omega upon twice pi can be taken from over here. Omega upon twice pi equals to 1 by t. Therefore, wave velocity, I am writing it over here. Therefore, the final wave velocity can be given as, let us take this color, v, that is wave velocity. So, wave velocity is given by lambda upon t. Now, this is what you get from your derivation. But if you think this in a practical way, say suppose this wave is taking a time of t to travel a distance of lambda. That is, lambda is the wavelength. Lambda is the wavelength. So, this particular wave of wavelength lambda is taking a time of t. So, what will be the velocity? Velocity is nothing but a total distance upon total time. Lambda is the total length of the wave upon the total time taken to travel the wave. This is what is your wave velocity.